It's now my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce to you today our keynote speaker. Mike Galliano has steadfastly demonstrated a, a commitment to continuous improvement in almost every aspect of structural firefighting. Mike has extended his passion not only to the Seattle Fire Department, but throughout the American Fire Service. Mike cares, he cares deeply, about bringing the message of fire service training to others. I know Mike is gonna impress and inspire us here this morning, but first let me recap a little bit of Mike's work history for you. Mike has 22 years of experience with the Seattle Washington Fire Department and with the United States Air Force. He is currently the captain of training and a member of the Seattle Fire Department's Operational Skills Enhancement Development Team. Mike teaches across the country in air management, firefighter safety, fire ground strategy and tactics. And he's also a member of our FDIC Associate Board. Mike's co-authored the book, Air Management for the Fire Service. This sounds like a, just a completely shameless huckster up here, which was also published by Fire Engineering. <laughs> Mike's co-authored numerous articles for Fire Engineering, and he's also on the board of directors for the Cyanide Poisoning Coalition Treatment. Please join with me in giving Mike a warm FDIC welcome to Mike Galliano. <laughs> well, what is a firefighter? What is a firefighter? They're your neighbor next door. Just like you and me, with warts, worries, and unfulfilled dreams. Yet they stand taller than most of us. They are firefighters. A firefighter is at once the most fortunate and the least fortunate people in the world. They are men and women who save lives because they have seen too much death. They are gentle because they've seen the awesome power of violence that has gotten out of control. They are responsive to a child's laughter because their arms have held too many small bodies that will never laugh again. They don't preach the brother and sisterhood of man. They don't have to. They live it every single day. You are seated amongst some of the most courageous, heroic men and women that have ever walked this planet. Sitting right next to you, in front of you, in back, are men and women every day who display service, valor, honor, integrity, and they do it as a matter of course, as a matter of their own personal life. I have the privilege, the distinct privilege, honor of my life, to spend a few minutes, minutes with you today to talk about an incredible, incredible individual. You know him, you know him very well, because it's you. Brothers and sisters, is there anywhere in the world you would rather be right now than FDIC? Anywhere in the world. I want to speak to you today about who you are. And most importantly, remembering who you are. I have to take you back a little bit. To make this work, we got to go back. For some of you, we got to go way back. I want you to think about back to the time of the horses, right? I would like you to think about the time that you got the notification that you were going to be accepted as a firefighter. Do you remember that day? Folks, my wife will tell you I can't remember what I had for breakfast. But I can remember that day. I remember who I was with. I remember where I was. I remember coming from the playground with my kids to the post office box. And there was a letter from the Seattle Fire Department. And I knew this was either going to be really good news or really bad. And it was one of the most incredible days of my life because the fire department that I wanted more than any in the world to be a part of had asked me to come to their recruit academy. And I was absolutely blown away. Do you remember that day? Do you remember what that felt like? How about your recruit academy? Do you remember showing up at your recruit academy and you were dazed and you didn't quite know what to expect? And depending upon how long ago your recruit academy was, there was various levels of stress and strain applied. You remember the stories? You have a story. I do too. I remember my first house fire. 
And we're down in a basement and we are doing it. And there's smoke everywhere and we can't see squat and the two or three pallets that are burning somewhere in the distance with glass breaking over our heads and the instructor's yelling at us to hit the fire. I can't see the fire. I can't see anything. I see a little glow. I hit it. And it goes out. We exit the building. Me and my partner, are, we are jazzed. We look the demon in the face and we beat it. We conquered our fear. Yeah! My back was turned to the house and my partner's face all of a sudden turned ghost white. I said, Mike, I don't think we got the fire. <laughs> as long as I live, I will never forget the sight as I turned around of my recruit captain coming out the door, soaking wet. <laughs> and these words echoed across the landscape. Galliano, that was my flashlight. <laughs> I don't know if this had anything to do with my superlative nozzle work or not, but the next week when we graduated the academy, I got assigned to a truck. <laughs> Folks, you are the true leaders of the fire service. I hope you're not forgetting the dreams you had when you first joined your fire department. I hope you're not letting anything take that away or steal that from you. I hope you remember your first assignment and that group of men and women who became family to you. They became brothers and sisters. In some cases, they became that crazy uncle that you just couldn't get away from. But they built into you. They taught you. They invested in you. They gave what they had been taught and learned. And they made you what you are. And they instilled in you a set of values that may have been a little different than what you brought to the, to the fire department. Are you forgetting that? Are you letting that go? Because, folks, the world has a different set of values. They look in at you. They look in at the service you provide. They look in at what you do day to day. And they are absolutely blown away. They are in awe. This world values money first. That's the first priority. What's the bottom line? For firefighters, it's not even in the top page. Every single day, you are invited with great urgency into the homes, the churches, the sacred places of men and women across the country. And they didn't expect you to be there that day, and they're sure glad you're there now. And there's money laying on the counter. There's jewelry laying on the bedstand. Things that are sacred and precious and valuable to them. Even the modesty of the family members that they love so much are in your care. And that money, those valuables, the things that they hold nearest and dear are safer in the presence of a firefighter than in any bank in the world because of who you are. The world is dedicated to a me-first attitude. How does this benefit me? What am I getting out of this? And then they're confronted with firefighters who are interested only in what is best for others. This is best represented by the late FDNY Lieutenant Howie Carpluck, caught in a terrible collapse, up to his chest in debris, struggling to breathe, in pain, going in and out of consciousness. And what is he concerned about? <clears throat> what is he most worried about? his partner. He redirects the rescue efforts to his partner because of who he was, because of who you are. Folks, honor, integrity, teamwork, those things aren't bumper stickers for us. That's not just something off a post-it note that somebody got off the calendar of the month. We saw this in the Seattle Fire Department with my recruit school classmate, Randy Turlicker. Randy died in the arson fire at the Pang Warehouse. Randy always told us if he was ever caught in a situation where he and his partner could not get out and he couldn't get his partner free from any type of entrapment, that he would take off his pass device, he would leave it by his partner, and he would get him help. And that's exactly what he did. When that floor collapsed, when his partner was buried in the rubble, Randy took off his pass device, he set it by his partner in that flaming, burning hell hole, and he went out to get help. And we found him some distance away, a hero.
because of who he was. Because of who you are. Brothers and sisters, you can never let that slip. You can never forget that. We grieve recently for Captain Brockstrom, Firefighter Shira, for Station Officer Lavelle from New Zealand. They gave their life in service to a community like you do every day. They stand with the heroes that echo down the corridors of the fire service of paying the price with their lives for something greater than themselves. With all of that, we see on the television the rash of political commercials that are coming. Have you seen the latest one, the very controversial one? It's 3 a.m. Who do you want answering the phone when you're having the worst day of your life and it's 3 a.m.? Now, don't answer that because I don't want you to embarrass yourself. At 3 a.m., I'm telling you that the citizens of the world are praying to God that on the other end of that phone, when they're having the worst day of their life, there is a well-trained fire company ready to respond because experience has told them those are the folks that are going to come and make it better. Despite all of this, all that you have to be proud of, we are told as we teach classes, as we talk with brothers and sisters across the country, that there are firefighters that are losing heart. They're losing their passion. They're wondering aloud what role they have in the fire service, what role they play. I hope that's not any of you. I saw a video. I watch it a couple times a year. It's so inspiring. Tom Brennan and Alan Brunacini did an unplugged that was absolutely unforgettable. They were getting questions from the audience and in their inimitable style answering those questions. And a gentleman from the audience asked Chief Brennan, what do you see as the future of the fire service? Where are we headed? How are we doing? Chief Brennan answered, as you would expect, succinctly and directly. He looked him in the eye and he said, brother, you are the fire service. You are the fire service. Take it over. Take it over. The haunting part of the whole message, because it's being taken from you. Are you allowing that to happen? Are you allowing the lame and the lazy to steal your passion? Are you allowing the politicians to demean what you do? Brothers and sisters, I believe the answer to the questions that befuddle the fire service are sitting right in this room. The brightest and the best are assembled here. I believe you have the answers to what ails us. Folks, it doesn't matter if you're the one in charge. Thankfully for the fire service, we haven't had to rely on only the people that are in charge. Brothers and sisters, don't wait for orders from headquarters. Ride to the sound of the guns. Go where the battle is. Go where the skirmish is happening. Those guns in the distance you hear are firefighters, and they're dying to be trained. They want to be trained realistically because they know we're not getting as many fires. They're looking for leaders. Leaders who have not forgotten that the, it is a sacred privilege to lead firefighters. They're looking for mentors, the same mentors that you had, that invested in you, that made you who you are. Are you stepping up to that task? There is a story of a mountain, an incredible mountain that people love to climb. It was so incredible that thousands would show up in an entrepreneurial sort, possibly a firefighter, decided to build a lodge at the base of the mountain. That's where it got steep. That's where the last leg of the climb was, where it got really tough. And folks would come to that lodge, and they would sit in that lodge, and they would get soup, and they would sit by the fire and sit on the couch, and there would be fellowship, and they would rest up for the last journey of the climb. And it was great. After 15, 20 minutes, the majority of the people would get up. Hey, let's go. We're going on up. And they would tackle the rest of that mountain. And inevitably, there would be a few that would stay behind because that second cup of soup sounded really good, and the couch was comfortable, and the fire was warm. And it was cold outside. And that mountain was steep. They say, no, I'm going to stay out. I'll, uh, I'll catch up. The people who run the lodge said that the same thing happens every time. 
Those people, two, three hours after they're sitting on the couch and having their second cup of soup, they would start to get restless. And they would look out the window and they would look up at that mountain and they would realize as the sun was starting to set and they would see the people who had reached their goals coming down that it was not going to happen for them that day. They had allowed something that in and of itself was fine to take over the dream and the goal they had set. And they walked out of that lodge disheartened and disappointed because they were not going to meet the goal that they had set for themselves. Are we going to allow that to occur? Brothers and sisters, use FDIC as a stoking point for what you want to do and what you want to be in the fire service. You have some of the greatest classes you could go to in the world at your beck and call. Go out and celebrate. Go out at night and enjoy your brothers and sisters. When they're looking down from heaven and they say, what's that noise? I believe Chief Brennan will be holding court up there and he'll say, you know what that is? That's men and women celebrating being alive. But celebrate in a manner that is respectful to our service. Let the folks of Indianapolis know that it's firefighters that are in town. And be prepared. Show up tomorrow morning. Show up ready to take the classes, to do the stuff. You provide the answers. You are the solution. Go down to the bookstore and grab one of the many great books that are there. If you can get a copy of Frank Montagna's Responding to Routine Emergencies and take it back to your group, they'll be blown away. Grab Dave Dodson's Reading Smoke DVD. Grab John Norman's Tactical Studies and take that to your troops. Imagine learning with your people from John Norman. Brothers and sisters, we have it at our hands. We have it at our beck and call. Use this conference to ignite the flame. For those of you who are saying, folks, this doesn't apply. I'm already fired up. That's great. Grab somebody by the elbow who needs it and take them along with you. Say, hey, man, we're going on up. We're going to ride to the sound of the guns. We're not going to be dissuaded. Remember, brothers and sisters, that mediocrity and comfort loves company. Folks will sit around the table with you and they will cry in their soup and they will drag you down because it validates their own failures. You remember who you are. You remember the training that needs to occur. You remember the mentoring that needs to occur. You remember that you have a role to play and it's key and it's vital and only you can do it. I don't care where you're from, the size of your department, I don't care what your mission is, only you can play it. No one on this stage can. Brothers and sisters, as we close, as we celebrate FDIC, I want to thank you for being who you are. I want to thank you, and I pray that you will remember your calling. You will remember your mission. Most of all, brothers and sisters, never forget. Remember who you are. God bless you. Thank you. Got Well, I'd like to thank you again for all joining with us here this morning. Um, we're expecting about 30,000 of you. I have a couple of things I'd like to do before you all leave. If you just give me one second, a couple of announcements you absolutely need to hear. Tonight, the NFA meeting is going to be at 7 o'clock at the Marriott Hotel Ballroom 4. We also have a special world premiere pre pre preview of a movie called Fireproof, which will be right after Bruno and Friends at 7.30. Fireproof the movie. It's a real movie by Sony Pictures, and they came here and said we can see it for free. Is it, it is tonight, right? I'm getting the hairy eyeball from my boss. So it's a free movie. Go see that now. This is the important part. This is a dangerous job, a very dangerous job. And we do brave and heroic things. And doing brave and heroic things involves risk, and great firefighters will be lost. Last night, I have the uh, displeasure, actually, of telling you that in Lawrence Township, Pennsylvania, Deputy Chief Michael Crotty was killed in the line of duty. As we stand here right now, two of our fellow firefighters, Captain Robin Boxerman, 17-year veteran of the Coltrane Fire Department, and Brian Scherrera, Firefighter Brian Scherrera, being laid to rest. Yesterday evening, President Bush awarded a Medal of Honor to a Navy SEAL, Chief Petty Officer Michael Mansour, and it was posthumous. 
Please join me now in a moment of silence for Michael Crotty, Robin Boxerman, Brian Scherer, and Michael Mansour. Please remember them in your hearts. They're why we're here. You are America's best. God is on your side. Get out there and train. Have a great time, and we'll see you all again tomorrow morning. God bless each and every one of you. Good.